Okay guys, I had to take my phone off the gimbal in there because what I saw is a little disturbing. Today's adventure takes us to Forest Home Cemetery here in Forest Park, Illinois. This cemetery is massive, over 85,000 graves. It goes back to the 1830s. It was a pioneer cemetery, but before that, it was an Indian burial ground. And there's a monument to the Potawatomi Indians on a burial mound that we're gonna take a look at today. We're gonna to take a look at the monument to the Haymarket riots that occurred here in Chicago, and some other monuments that are just incredible. What a wonderful cemetery. So please join me as we go for a walk in Forest Home Cemetery. Welcome everybody to another video. Today we are at Forest Home Cemetery in Forest Park, Illinois. This is an absolutely massive cemetery. Over 85,000 graves. And uh, we're gonna see what kind of uh, things we can find today in this cemetery. I am in the, what I believe the oldest section of the cemetery and uh, let's take a look around here a little bit and see what we can find. Robert, looks like Hayden is the name. Now this, is this the oldest one in the cemetery? Let me see here. I don't think it is. It's a little bit worn. It's a little bit hard to tell. Uh, let me grab my flashlight here and see if we can get some dates on this one. All right, I did remember the flashlight today, so that's good. Yeah, this one's going to be pretty darn difficult to read. Gilbert, it looks like. Handon, Hayden, right there, and his wife, C-H-A-R, oh, that's not his wife, that's Charles, right there. Beautiful monument, it says Hayden there on the bottom. Very nice. Then we have this. statue Robinson is the name I almost want to say Robinson but there's no end so it's Robinson it's a name there many many old tombstones gravestones headstones whatever you want to call it lot in this cemetery. Let's see what we have here. A draped urn. As we know that's very common. I see that a lot if you watch my channel at all. Margaretha Fox in German. This was a German cemetery. It started as such. Eighteen eighty-seven, and then uh, we have some German writing, and here we have here's Margaretha here, Peter, nineteen twenty-five, and Mina, nineteen seventeen. Really nice. We've got an old one here that's leaning up against this. Edward is the name. Benjamin. Born. All right. Let's see when he was born. Eighteen something. Eighteen, maybe eighteen sixty-five. I don't know. That one's pretty old looking now. That's for sure. I mean, look at this. 
85,000 graves in this cemetery. Remarkable. This is quite possibly the largest obelisk I have ever seen. This is the Ball family. This obelisk has to be 40 to 50 feet tall. It is just massive. Absolutely huge. It's about, the base is at least 10 to 12 feet. Wow, that is something right there. Let's see the names here. Catherine Perkinson, Annie Ball, and Mary Perkinson. What an absolutely massive monument to the Ball family. Trying to see if there's any other names or dates. I don't see any. But, uh, wow. That is impressive. Coming up to this mound here. And interesting thing about this mound, well, this goes back centuries. This is an old Indian burial ground. And, uh, That's what this mound is. Let's, let's read this one. We have a monument here. This is a site of a village and burial ground of the Potawatomi Indians from ancient times until 1835 when they were exiled to lands beyond the Mississippi. I think it was actually earlier in 1835. This was known as Indian Hill and stood a cabin of Leon, Barasa, the trapper, his Indian wife, Margaret. She chose to remain near the graves of her ancestors. As the years passed, the visits to Potawatomi's became ever less frequent, and this memorial has been erected to perpetuate their memory. That's really nice. That's very nice. A lot of history right here. A lot of history. And I'll let you read through that. Pause the video, feel free to read through that. It looks like these, uh, this area became the homestead of Ferdinand Haas and his family. First person to die in this new home was buried on this hill in 1854. Wow, that's, that's something, that is something. So not only do we have centuries of Native Americans buried here, we also have the first white settler of this area buried here. And we do have some tombstones up here. Let's take a look. We have Frederick Zimmerman, 1897 to 1856. Christina, 1803 to 1856. And Carl, must be their son, 1854. And here they now rest on top of this Indian burial mound. Okay, I don't know if I'm following the yellow brick road, but it is definitely a brick road. Nice paver road here, and we have a line of mausoleums coming up. Definitely going to check those out. Sort of in what appears to be a hillside. Let's start with the one here on the left, and we'll work our way around and check them out.
We have Hansen is the name on this mausoleum. Boarded up at this point. Wow, it's like we have a, just a whole clump of mausoleums here that are in like an artificial hillside. Nichols, the name on this one, again, boarded up. Generally means the family lineage has ceased and there's nobody around from that family to care for things, so they just, they just board them up at that point. Alexander Guild, 1911-1903, that's interesting. And then we have this one, Grace P. Carr, it says. And this one's actually bricked in. And it's been bricked in for some time. Those are old style bricks, but we have the nice columns here. This is a very nice mausoleum. It's a shame that, uh, oh wow, there's some damage here too. Let's take a look. Yeah, there's some damage to this mausoleum. Okay, I didn't realize how steep this was. Go back down. And here we have Davison, again, boarded up. Beautiful mausoleums. Take a walk here to the other side. It's interesting how they're in this hillside type thing. I think the mausoleums were built and then the dirt was dumped. I'm not sure why. Or maybe it is a natural hill. I don't know. Kluver, it's the name on this one. So this one here, you can't actually see in. Very simple inside. There's not even inscriptions on the wall saying who's in here. Boy, this one's been uh, sitting empty for, for some time. Have a GF. Schumacher, again boarded up. Beautiful relief up there above the name. Somebody definitely put a lot of money and time into that. Wow, look at this, guys. Chaz Rowe and the old Hab. Haber, Old Haber, 1906. Wow, look at this. The door, the steel door, is on the ground inside there. And we could see Harry, 1945, Charles, 1906, Augustine, 1962. Mary, must be Charles' wife, 1909, and then Alice there on the bottom right, 1986. But, uh, wow, that has seen better days. I don't know how that metal door, it must have just rusted and fallen. And then we have an identical mausoleum next to it. The door is still intact. And then we have some, uh, oh wow, pretty bad mausoleums. Beautiful though, 1888 on this one. 
Ballman is the name. That one's bricked in. This one is in a sad state of disrepair. The name is gone. And we have Davis 1903. This is a large size one. And Horman 1899. Both of these are still in good shape, but you can see this one right next to it. Just it's ready to fall. It is very close to falling. This door is completely rusted out. I don't know if we could see anything in there. Um, let me get my flashlight. I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, there's some crypts in there. Um, I don't think I'll be able to get my camera in there. Okay, guys, I had to take my phone off the gimbal in there because what I saw is a little disturbing. And I want to get a better picture of it. There is a casket in here laying on the ground right there. Somebody pulled it out from there. Somebody did a little grave robbing in here at one point. And there's the casket. Um, it's hard to see what I'm filming because uh, I can't really see. Okay guys, while I was editing this video, I paused on this particular section and I was able to determine some bones. On the left there, it looks to be a skull. You could see the teeth and you could see the orbital sockets. And then on the right, there appears to be a bone on the floor. Uh, you could see wood from the original casket. I think the original wood casket was put inside this metal a container that we see in the center of the screen and that whole metal container was pulled out along with the wood casket and uh, we could see the bones scattered about at least I see the one bone in the skull I don't know where the rest of the skeleton is maybe it's still in there somewhere not sure but uh, very disturbing so we'll see what I get him when I go to edit this there's the casket lying there and then we can see it was pulled out of there. Uh, very sad. Very sad. Wow, that is something. I wonder why they selected that particular grave to rob. But definitely uh, some grave robbing went on in here at some point. Wow. And you can see right out in front here, there's what used to be the road that used to go through here. No longer going through there. But that is the uh, Herman Mausoleum. A little grave robbing going on there. Coming up on the grave site of the Kettle Strains. Now, they're one of the first settlers in this area. As a matter of fact, this was called Kettlestreen's Grove at one time. Now you know. Hannah F., wife of Samuel Dunlop, died 1883, the age of 51. Joseph, 1897, and Mary. It looks like 18... 68, I believe. So a little history on them. They are the first family buried here in this cemetery. Now, you would notice here, we have um, their children. Mary died August 1844 and August 19th of 1844. And Thomas, August 21st, 1844. Rough time in that family died of scarlet fever, all three of them, within a matter of nine days. 
And then uh, on the bottom there, you have William. He died 1850. William drowned at the age of 20 years of age. So four of their children died. On a positive note, they had uh, 10 children all together, so six did survive. That's why you had large families back then. There was a good chance of, of uh, death. And here's Joseph. He died 1883, 75 years of age. Not sure when he came to this area. He was born in England because a couple of his children were born in England. And Betty, his wife, died 1885. But, um, yeah, none of this, none of this was here when they passed away. They were not the first grave here. I mean, this was uh, Indian burial ground, but they were the first family to be buried here. There was probably only a couple of graves here when they were buried. Interesting story about the kettle strings. We see here another massive obelisk. This obelisk, Austin is the name. If you remember, we saw the ball obelisk that's about 50 feet tall. This one, not quite as tall. Close though, close. I mean, this one might be about 40 feet tall. Still an impressive, impressive monument nonetheless. Let's take a quick look at this one. A. A, a Williams is the name on this one. Beautiful stone, that's about 25 feet tall. Aaron Williams, born 1838, died 1909. And Susan, his wife, Died 1896. Let's see what we have here. Sarah Williams Anderson, probably their child, 1933, and Annie, 1937. And here's one of his children, Jesse May, born 1882 in June, died a year later at the age of one, 1883, unfortunately. Let me check this out. Oh, look at this. Carl Kumaro appears to be the name. Look at that. It's a woman with a book in her left hand and a weeping child in her right hand knelt over to mourn the loss of Carl. I don't know if there's any more details. Here we go, right here, 1845 to 1922. Beautiful monument. All right, guys, we're coming up now to the grave of Samuel Follows. Interesting story here. The Episcopal Church, Brigadier General of the Federal Army. So what's interesting is he was a brigadier general in the Civil War, entered the Civil War as chaplain of the 32nd Wisconsin Voluntary Infantry, but abandoned his religious capacity to command troops in combat. He was successfully the lieutenant colonel of the 40th Wisconsin Infantry, then the colonel of the 49th Wisconsin Infantry, and then uh, brigadier general and after the war, he returned to his religious vocation and he became a bishop. What an interesting life he has led. Okay, guys, as I walk through here, and I've mentioned this in the past, 85,000 graves in here. I do get uh, somewhat overwhelmed. So I'm trying to really kind of target the best of the best, you know? Uh, get the most bane for the buck here, because there's just so much to look at, so much to see. And one of the really neat monuments that I want to show you that I just saw, 
It's this one here. Look at how beautiful this is. Tank is the name on this one. Large monument. Draped cross. With the angel. Wow. Beautiful. We have the mother here. Does not give her name. There's her photo. Father. If there was a photo, it's long gone. Doesn't even look like there was because I don't see any kind of adhesive in there. And then Fred. Just Fred. So I don't know what relation Fred was. And no photo there or no dates, which I'm kind of surprised. Such a beautiful monument. And you don't have a whole lot of information on these uh, people buried here. Just look at this. In another section of this vast cemetery, this one, um, I'm not sure what happened here. We have some monuments that have toppled. Fortunately, I almost think probably uh, some nefarious intentions here because uh, that base is pretty straight. Both those bases are pretty straight, but yet the, and look at this one here. Unfortunately, uh, has crumbled and fallen. Finial is there. Uh, Ruse is the name. Looks like R O O S. Let's take a look at this beautiful obelisk. The name's Peter Pop. P O P P. Look at that. And you could tell we are in the older section of the cemetery because here's one of the old walkways of the cemetery. There's like walking paths between family plots, which is very, very interesting. This one definitely caught my eye. Have the anchor there. Carl is the name. Jorint, J-O-E-R-N-D-T. He passed away in 1902. Henrietta, his wife, looks to have passed away, looks like that's 1913, I believe, or 1918 down there. But a beautiful monument. We have a mausoleum here that I would like to check out. This one, very sturdy. Although decaying rapidly. Wow, look at that, guys. Look at that. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. You could tell at one time that there was a stairway going down. I believe there was a stairway going down. That has been uh, since filled in. Okay guys, I'm back here. So I wanted to see. That is what I think it is. That is a door. Let's take a look here. Holy cow, guys. Look at that. There's coffins in there. Wow. Okay, guys, another mausoleum. More bones found. This time it doesn't appear to be grave robbing. It just looks like this casket has deteriorated to the point where you can see inside. Check this out. It looks like the full skeleton is in there. You can see uh, some of the spine there going down to the pelvis and you can see the right femur if you look closely right there so it looks like the skeleton is still fully intact in there but um, 
This coffin, for some reason, has deteriorated. Even though it appears to be metal, I'm not sure what happened um, with it to get a hole like that. But definitely um, body inside there. There's the skeleton. That is amazing. Two coffins in there. That one looks to be empty. Absolutely amazing. Old metal coffins too. That's, wow, remarkable. I think there were some bones in there. I'll have to look on editing. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. Incredible monument draped urn. At least 20 feet tall. H. Wyman. And you can see here there's a relief here of probably him and his wife at one time. 1875 looks to be the date of death. Wow, I mean this is probably one of the most intricately detailed monuments I have seen from that time period. Just incredible. Wow. Here we have another Woodsman of America. Many of them in this cemetery. Yois, it looks like. Bruins, 1860 to 1889. And William, 1858 to 1865. And there we have the dove. Sometimes you see the dove on these, sometimes you don't. It all depends. I don't know if it depends on who carved it or what, or if that was some extra money or what it was. Okay, guys, I'm almost thinking I'm going to have a two-part video here because uh, it just keeps going. The name is Schoen Schoenfeld. Another wonderful mausoleum. And across from that, you got to look at this. Statue on top of this pillar. It's a monument to the IOOF, International Order of Odd Fellows. In German. And here on the back. It shows the people that represented the International Order of Odd Fellows. That's pretty, pretty remarkable. Massive monument. All the way up. There you can do it. There we go. just unbelievable cemetery. I have not seen all of it. As a matter of fact, this cemetery connects to what used to be another cemetery via a bridge over water. And um, that bridge is being renovated right now. So I can't even get, well, easily get to the other half of this cemetery. Wow, look at this. I'm gonna need a little help with this. U-A-O-D, I'm not sure what that stands for. Somebody out there knows, please leave it in the comments. But uh, this is quite the monument. Let me zoom in on that if I can. Would you look at that? Wow. That is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. UAOD, the date is 1888. 
and um, this is in the center there's a a path here around it with some large monuments in circles around that large monument in the center. That is just beautiful. Wow. Okay guys, I have found it. The Haymarket Martyrs Monument right here. What a beautiful monument this is. Would you look at that? Wow. Let me see here a placard, Haymarket Martyrs Monument designated a National Historic Landmark in 1997, represents the labor movement, struggle for workers' rights. And let me tell you the story a little bit here behind this monument. On May 4th, 1886, labor activists planned a meeting in Chicago's Haymarket Square to protest the killing of a worker by police during a strike for an 80-hour, for an eight-hour work day. As the meeting was about to end, the police inspector, John Bonfield, sent 176 policemen to disperse the crowd. Look at the detail on this. Just gorgeous. Someone ignited a bomb, killing a policeman. And then the policeman responded by shooting wild, wildly into the fleeing crowd, killing four protesters. Six policemen were also killed, most by their wild shooting police brothers. And they sentenced seven, seven men, although they couldn't find out who the bomber was, and they just called it a sham of a trial. They just prosecuted whoever they could find. For really no reason and so this monument was erected toward that beautiful monument here I had to come over here because this interests me it looks like uh, well Katzenberger is the name George Katzenberger died 1896 unfortunately it looks like uh, this is missing there's a piece right here some kind of placard right there and it's gone. George must have been a mason. I see some uh, tools up there, a square, some chisels and such, and then a draped urn on the top. It was a beautiful monument until somebody vandalized it. I don't understand people some days, but thank you all so much for coming in with me on this walk, an amazing walk, amazing cemetery today. Um, a lot of history here, a lot of history here. I'm going to have to come back. I mean, this cemetery, I just, I caught just a sliver of it. So I will have to come back. Please, if you like this video, please subscribe. Please hit that like button. Turn on the notifications. I really appreciate it. And as always, until next time, keep exploring.